from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you here to the African Middle Eastern Division on behalf of our chief, Dr. Mary Jane Deeb, and uh, my colleagues from the three sections of the division. Those sections are the African section, whose staff uh, develops the collection from and about uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, the Hebraic section, whose staff develops the collection from and about Israel and uh, about Judaica worldwide, and the Near East section, of which I'm the head. Uh, as I explained to uh, some visitors this morning, the Near East section covers countries stretching from Casablanca in the west to Kashgar in Chinese Turkestan, Xinjiang in the east, and from Khartoum in the south to Kazan in the north. Um, the staff develops the collections from and about all of the Arab countries, Turkey and Turkic Central Asia, Iran, Afghanistan, um, Tajikistan, and the countries of the Caucasus, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia, as well as collections from and about the Muslims in the Balkans, Russia, and Western China. All in all, the collection of the Near East section is approaching half a million volumes, approximately 50% of which are in Arabic. The other uh, big languages are Persian and Turkish, about 75 to 80,000 volumes apiece, uh, followed by Armenian, and uh, then Georgian, Uzbek, all the way down to Ingush, which has had phenomenal growth. We used to have nine volumes, we now have 12. And we do keep a very refined uh, control over our material. And any one of you who is doing research um, will please come and consult with the specialists and reference librarians here because they can provide you with access not only to our own collection in the local languages, but to the collections broadly across the library in a special format such as prints and photographs or geography and maps or in the vast general collections. One of our tasks is to make known to the public our collections and what we do here. And to that end, we often have these lectures at noon and most of the people who present the lectures here are not selected by me or by another section head, but by the actual staff of the division. And today's speaker was contacted in that manner by the man I refer to as the Ustad, the master, uh, Dr. Fauzi Tadros, who is our senior Arab world specialist. And now I would ask that Fauzi come forward and introduce today's speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, before I introduce Dr. Nevin Tolba, let me mention that this event is being videotaped for subsequent broadcast on the library's web webcast and the other media. There will be a formal question and answers period. Please be advised that your voice and the image may be recorded and later broadcast as part of the event. By participating in the questions and the answers period, you are consenting to the library's possible reproduction and transmit of your remarks. Okay. Dr. Tolba received her PhD degree in guidance from Anchams University in 2007. Her dissertation topic is the torch in ancient Egypt till the end of the new kingdom. She received her master's degree from Helwan University. Her master's degree topic is 
iconographic study of, of offering scenes on the walls of the temple of Medinat Habu. Dr. Tolba taught many courses on the ancient Egyptian history, archaeology of ancient Egypt, the Egyptian Museum. Dr. Tolba now is lecturer at Ain Shams University, Faculty of Arts, Guidance Department. She is also a fellow at Johns Hopkins University at Baltimore. She published many articles and in the process to be published in a book form. Please join me welcoming Dr. Tolba. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure. It's, it's my pleasure to be here with you and share uh, my knowledge about treasures of King Tut. I would like, first I would like to thank Dr. Uh, Mary Jane Dean, Mary Jane Deeb, and Dr. Fauzi Tadros, who gave me the opportunity to be here and to give this presentation about King Tut. So first, I would like My, uh, my topic is Treasures of King Tutankhamun in the Egyptian Museum. So I will talk about, first, I will talk about Egyptian Museum, the points, uh, and then I will talk about who is the Golden King, King Tut, and the death of Tutankhamun, the cause of his death, discovery of the tomb, the shrines of Tutankhamun, the coffins of Tutankhamun, the golden mask of the king, the canopic shrine and canopic chest, the throne, and Anubis above a shrine shaped box, some other pieces. First, I will talk about the Egyptian Museum. Uh, the, the current Egyptian Museum is in Tahrir Square, and it houses uh, the, collection, the collection of King Tut. It houses also the largest collection of pharaonic antiquities. It was designed in 19 by an architect, uh, the French architect, Marcel Dournion. During uh, the Egyptian Revolution, the Egyptian Museum had been broken and uh, 50 objects have been stolen. So we can see in these two pictures, we can see the Egyptian Museum, uh, the entrance of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, and we can see also the ground inside the Egyptian Museum the collection of King Tut is in the upper floor. This is a protester, Egyptian protester, in front of the Egyptian Museum. They are defending the Egyptian Museum. And during this revolution, many, uh, many objects have been stolen. So we can see here some objects of collection of King Tut uh, were stolen. This is uh, the first one is the King Tut hunting an hippopotamus. The other one is King Tut on the back of a tiger. And the third one is, uh, is a god Menkeret carrying mummified King Tut. There are an exhibition in the museum now uh, after, uh, after we, we have found uh, 25th object. So uh, we made an exhibition in 2013, in 2013, an exhibition in the Egyptian Museum for uh, those, uh, those pieces which were restored. So we can see here uh, the, the, must, uh, the, the statue and uh, w the, the other photo, the other photo show uh, it was damaged and then it was recovered. The first one, uh, the first one is King Tot on the back of a tiger, and this is a tiger damage. And this is another piece, uh, the, the King Tut hunting an hippopotamus, and it was damaged before, and it was restored. And uh, the exhibition is in Hall 44 in the Egyptian Museum. Who is the Golden King? Who is the Golden King Tut? Tutankhamun uh, is, uh, is, uh, is a king, was a king when he was uh, eight years old. He was a boy, that's why you called him uh, the boy king. His father was uh, King Akhenaten, 
and his uh, his father his mother was uh, a queen queen Akhenaten's sister he married to queen Anches and Paaten and he reestablishing uh, reestablished uh, Thebes as uh, the main uh, the main city and uh, the capital was Memphis Tutankhamun uh, changed his name from Tutankhamun to Tutankhamun, and the name of uh, his uh, wife also changed from uh, Tutankhamun to Tutankh, uh, from Anches and Paaten to Tutankhamun and Amun. And this is uh, this is two statue showing uh, the king Akhenaten, his father, and Queen Nefertiti, his mother-in-law. The death of King Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun died at the age of 19, so he died so young. And we discovered a hole at the head, at, in the back of his head. We discovered a hole, so we, some, uh, some thinks that he, he was mur murdered. But, but an evidence, we discovered another evidence in 2005 that uh, the mom, when we uh, uh, when we analyzed the mummy, that he hadn't been murdered, but this hole was made by uh, it was it was an installation for liquid for mummification process. Uh, we have also CT scan and we made a DNA proved and uh, two discovered two discoveries. The first one was that. Tutan Amun has a left leg, uh, a fracture in his left leg, so he has deformities. And another discovery is that th this is his coffin. And the, uh, the second one was that Tutan Amun suffered from severe malaria. And this is, uh, we can see two pictures. In the first one, we can see sticks of King Tutankhamun because uh, he has a fracture in his left leg. So uh, we have uh, 133 sticks in his tomb. And we, we, see, we can see also his coffin. He has malaria, which was the main cause of his death. The discovery of his tomb. The tomb of Tutankhamun was discovered by Howard Carter which was a British archaeologue, and uh, in 1922. The most important thing in this tomb is that it, it was virtually intact. It wasn't being robbed before. And uh, on November 4th, 1922, Howard Carter discovered the entrance. And on November uh, 24th, 1922, he showed the entrance to Lord Carnarvon, and he showed him the intact seals of the cemetery. Here we can see, we can see the plane of the tomb of Tutankhamun, which is in, at the Valley of the King, number 62. And we can see also the burial chamber of the king. Most, most kings of New Kingdom were buried in the Valley of the King. This is the tomb of Tutankhamun. The, f the first step that he uh, had uh, discovered, Howard Carter, was the passage. He, he discovered the steps, and then he made a hole in the wall at the end of the passage. He discovered the antechamber. Sorry. He discovered the antechamber, and then he made a hole in, at his left left hand, he discovered an, another chamber, which was annex. He made another hole in the in the left, right hand, which was the burial chamber. He discovered the burial chamber. And then he discovered another chamber, which was the treasury chamber. The burial chamber was filled with, with four shrines. This is. These are the four shrines. And as you see, four shrines lay inside one another. And then inside the shrine were three coffins. 
The three coffins lay one inside another also to protect all of them, to protect the mummy. So we can see here four shrines and uh, a photo of two shrines. And we can see also the coffins inside, inside the shrine and the sarcophagus. And finally, the mummy, which is inside. One of these shrines was symbol. All of them was the form of them was symbolic. One of the one of these shrine was uh, has the form of a pavilion where the king renew his energy and authority, and the other one uh, takes the form of a pre-dynastic temple of Upper Egypt. This is the three coffins, which lay one inside the other. We called it anthropoid, and it was normal for ancient Egyptians to have coffins, to have sarcophagus for protecting the mummy. So we can see here three coffins. For Tutankhamun, it was unusual to see three coffins inside sarcophagus, and then to protect, finally, to see the mummy. So we have three coffins, all of them made from wood, painted with gold. But the last one, the last one was golden, all of gold, and protect, for protecting the mummy also. And we can see here this coffin, we can see here in the form of God Osiris, God of death, and he is, uh, he is putting his, uh, his arm, he is uh, putting his arm on his chest, holding, uh, holding the symbols of authority. So we can see him. There is two other coffins. We see the other coffins also. This other coffin made of wood painted with gold. He is wearing the Nemes headdress of, of all kings. It's protected as uh, at at his forehead. We can see uh, a snake and a vulture which was two goddesses of Upper and Lower Egypt, Nehbet and Wajit. He is holding scepter, the scepter and the flail, which was symbols of authority and royalty. The golden mask of King Tut. The golden mask of King Tut covered the mummy. When Howard Carter tried to take it, he, uh, he failed, so uh, because it was stuck, because of the resin um, used, used during the mummification. So what he, he, he did, so he broke, he broken, he broken the mummy into 18 pieces. So we can see here the golden, the golden mask, it's all of gold, it weighed 11 kilogram of gold, it's a masterpiece. It's, it is so alive because of his eyes also. We can see this is the face of King Tutankhamun. He is wearing the Nemes headdress for all kings, all kings uh, wearing the, the Nemes headdress. And at his forehead, we can see a snake and a vulture who is goddess Nehbet and Wajit, goddess of Upper and Lower Egypt. He, is, uh, he, he, has, uh, he has around his chest, he has a uh, collar, a white collar with semi-precious stones. We can see a lot of stone here. We can see turquoise, we can see lapis lazuli, we can see uh, quartz, we can see uh, cornaline. The canopic shrine on a sledge. This is Canopic shrine is like a chamber, is like a box. It contains an alabaster canopic chest. An alabaster canopic chest which will contain also the internal organs of the king. So, because when, when the dead, when we mummify the dead, we take all the internal organs. So we take the lungs, we take intestines, we take a stomach and we take uh, we take all, all of them was taken from the body. So we see here uh, the shrine. It is on sledge for the movement, and 
at all sides of the shrine where we can see goddesses. So we can see two goddesses here in this, uh, in this Canopic shrine. This Canopic shrine was discovered in the treasury room. You can see where it was discovered also in the treasury room. So we have goddesses around the Canopic shrine for protection. They are protecting the internal organs or the viscera. So we can see a goddess Neet, goddess Selkut, Nephthys, and Isis. There are an important goddesses in ancient Egyptian, and they are, we can differentiate between them with their headdresses. They have different role, uh, and they have headdresses different. We can see here uh, goddess Isis with a throne on her head, Goddess Nephthys with a house on her head. We can see Goddess Selket with scorpion on her head, and Goddess Neet with two arch on her head. This is a canopic chest which uh, lay in the canopic shrine. It is divided into four compartments, and it, was, uh, it contained four vessels for the internal organs. The lid of each vessel uh, had the, uh, in the form of head of Tutankhamun. We, we can see here, this is in alabaster. In, it is a block of alabaster. We brought it, alabaster, it is stone brought from uh, Hatnoub from Middle Egypt. It is one block. And we can see here, and each, at each corner, it was protected by a goddess, Isis, Nephthys, uh, Neet, and Silken. And they are protecting the internal, all of them are protecting the internal organs of King Tut. The throne of King Tutankhamun. This throne is a masterpiece also. It is made from wood and painted with gold. We can see in the front of this throne, we can see uh, a beautiful scene. It is, the, it is uh, King Tutankhamun in front of his wife, Ankh es Anama. He, she is, uh, she is, in, uh, she is uh, looking at, his, at, her, at, at her husband with affection, and she is, uh, she is holding a vessel, a perfume vessel, and he is looking at her, uh, at, at, at his wife uh, with affection also. And they are wearing each one one sandal, symbol of life, of love. And we can see, uh, we can see also the side of the chair is decorated by a winged cobra, who protect the cartouches or the name of King Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun mean the living image of God Amun. The back of uh, this image uh, of this throne also is decorated by four cobras with sun disk. It's for protection also. And in front, in the front of the throne, we can see two lines. It's also for protection. We can see here Anubis above a shrine, shaped box. God Anubis was one of the most important gods in ancient Egypt. He was god of mummification and guardian of the cemetery. He is resting upon he is resting upon a shrine shaped box. This shrine shaped box was decorated by uh, by Jed and Teeth. Jed, symbol of Osiris. It was a symbol of Osiris for stability. And Teeth, symbol of Isis for infinity. This, is, this was two symbols on this shrine. This shrine has to contain, uh, to contain garments, contain vessels. And this is where we find uh, the uh, where we find this statue in the treasury room. 
Here we can see three Ferrari beds. These beds were for Ferrari process. It was not for sleeping. We found another three others for, for sleeping. This one of them has the shape of line, two lines, and its, uh, its eyes form with uh, quartz, and the, the nose was with blue glass. We have uh, the tail curl behind the bed. It, it's all of them from wood painted with gold also. The other, the other bed is a funerary bed in shape of cow. We can see here uh, two, two heads of cow surmounted by uh, horns of, uh, of cow also and the sun disk. It, it was associated, this cow was associated with goddess Hathor. We can see its body uh, with spots, filled with spots. And this, this funerary bed is in shape of cow and associated with gut mehit wirt. This is this old bed was for protection. The, th the third bed was uh, was in shape of uh, goddess Amut, connected with chapter 151 of Book of the Dead. This goddess Amut has a form of hippopotamus and the body of a felon and the tail of a crocodile. She, she was a devourer of souls. The ceremonial chariot of Tutankhamun. This, ceremo this ceremonial chariot uh, was discovered also in the treasure room, and we discovered six chariots in this tomb. All of them was disassembled, and we can see uh, this chariot has the name of Tutankhamun. The chariot was the chariot were introduced in Egypt from Hyksos. This is a cosmetic jar with a line on the lid. We can see uh, inside this uh, this jar we we saw contents of uh, animal fats and it, it has to contain cosmetic. This jar has a cylinder, we can see on it, we can see dogs, lions, attacking a prey, and we can see plants. On its lid, we can see a lion who represent, who represent uh, King Tutankhamun. We can see on, uh, on, the, on the body of this lion, we can see Nebkhiperura, which is the name of King Tutankhamun the second name of King Tutankhamun. So this is symbolic because he, it's, uh, this decoration means this decoration means that the king was uh, uh, making order over cows. This is a boat. We can see a boat with two figures. We can see both with uh, two heads of gazelles with real horn of gazelles. They have, uh, these two heads have the same direction. And in the center, we can see a cabin with four columns. It's, it rests, uh, on, it rests uh, on a basin. And this basin has, has to be filled with water. And we can see in the boat, we can see, uh, we can see two females, one sitting and the other one is standing. This was for decoration also and was made of alabaster. This is a perfume vessel. It's made from alabaster and uh, we see Two figures of Nile god Happy, uh, with the symbol. This is the symbol of unification of Upper and Lower Egypt. They are tying papyrus and lotus. The flowers of Upper and Lower Egypt, symbols of Upper and Lower Egypt. As we can see, uh, these two gods Happy take uh, the form of two men, and 
uh, surmounted by two cobras, goddess of Upper and Lower Egypt also. They are wearing, these two, co these two cobras are wearing uh, two, uh, two different crowns. Crown of Upper Egypt and crown of Lower Egypt. C crown of Upper Egypt is Hejit and the other crown of Lower Egypt is Dishrit. We can see also uh, this, this symbol of Sema is unification of, uh, they are making unification of Upper and Lower Egypt. And we can see on this vessel, names of uh, Tutankhamun and his wife, Ankh Senamun. Below, we see the cartouche of the king, Tutankhamun, the name, Nebhi Perura, protecting by two falcon, two Horus falcon also. It is made from alabaster, uh, brought from Menya or Hadnub in Middle Egypt. Inside this vessel, of course, we have perfume. This is a ritual chair. It differs from the other one, the throne, which I have mentioned before. It's, uh, it's ritual chair. It was used during uh, rituals, ceremonies, and it, has, it, all of the, uh, it is made of wood. It is a floating chair. We, ha we have geometric and inscriptions, decorations. We can see in the center, we can see goddess Nechbet, who is uh, holding uh, the chen, symbol of infinity. And uh, at the side, at its side, we can see cartouches of uh, King Tutankhamun. And uh, the chair has uh, legs in form of ducks. We have here two statues of King Tutankhamun. These two statues was discover were discovered. In, uh, in the entrance of the burial chamber. It acts as guardian of the burial chamber. They are made of wood. They, take, uh, uh, they, have, they have a black color of uh, rebirth. It's a symbol of rebirth. And they are made of wood and painted with gold also in some parts of them. They are similar except of their headdresses. One of them, are putting the nemes headdress, and the other one is putting the khat headdress. We can see uh, the king is uh, standing. He has, uh, he, ha he has in, uh, on his shoulder, he has a collar and a pectoral painted with wood, with, uh, with gold, and he, ha he wears also a long kilt. He is holding a mass and a staff in his right hand a mass, and in the other hand a staff. He is protecting the burial chamber. We have here a statue of King Tut Tutankhamun. He is standing over a tiger. He is, uh, he is wearing uh, the hijet, the white crown of Upper Egypt. At his forehead, we have Cobra, who was a goddess, Ujjat. And uh, he is holding a flail, symbol of authority. And the others, in the other hand, he is holding a staff. He is wearing a long kilt. In his, uh, in his body, we can see the Amarna style. And he is, uh, he is standing over a tiger tiger which uh, black because of uh, we, we can see the color black of resin and its symbol of rebirth. So he is maintaining also, he is standing over a tiger to maintain order over cows. This is Shawapti figure of Tutankhamun. As you see, here is a statue of Shawapti. Shawapti means who he, who he responds, because uh, kings, ancient Egyptian kings, 
used to have servants in their daily life. So after life, they, have, they, they want to have servants in their afterlife. So they have this Shawapti. Tutankhamun, in Tutankhamun tomb, we discover 413 Shawapti. And it differs uh, from headdresses and size and identity. And this Shawapti wear the Khepresh crown, which was a crown of war. At his forehead, at his forehead we can see the, uh, the cobra, which was goddess Wajit of, of Lower Egypt. And he is standing. He is uh, in the form of Osiris, crossing his hand on his chest, holding, holding uh, symbols of authority, the flail and the scepter, Hika. Around, around his neck, he has a, a white collar, and he's, a four, he's in the form of a mummy. Here is the photos of Shawapti. As you see, many Shawaptis in his was found in his tomb. They are different. They are wearing different headdresses, and they have different identity. They are all made of wood. Some of them are painted with gold. This is a pectoral of King Tutankhamun. Uh, this is a jewelry found. We found many jewelry on the mummy of Tutankhamun. And one of them was uh, this pectoral of King Tutankhamun. It's fr from gold. It's, we have in the center, we have uh, the winged scarab and holding two cobras. The cobra is surmounted by sun disk. And we can see inside, uh, from uh, one side and another side, we can see Ujjat, Ujjat I. Uh, this is symbol of God, Osiris, also. And we can see lotus and papyrus. Below, we can see flowers of lotus and papyrus. It's a, it has a semi-precious stone. It's, very, it's a masterpiece of art. And uh, we can see also uh, the Ankh, which is a symbol of life in ancient Egypt. And the scarab also was a symbol of rebirth in ancient Egypt. So uh, with this one, I, uh, I will finish my presentation. And thank you very much. And I hope that we can, uh, you can come to Egypt to see all these treasures. And I, uh, I have shown only a few pieces of this treasure. I hope to see you all in Egypt. And thank you for your attendance. Thank you, Dr. Naveen. And now we open the door for questions and answers. Dr. Merijan Deep. Yes. Uh, Dr. Merijan, you did a wonderful presentation. I'm sorry about this microphone, but <laughs> you remain cool and composed. I <laughs> really appreciate this. Uh, thank you. Uh, it, it was, it was, it was uh, most interesting. I have a question. Um, you often talk, and uh, you're right, I mean, you're referring to the protection. Protection in the tomb, in, uh, in the afterlife, and protection of uh, the king in the, the, when he's alive. Yeah. Uh, now, what exactly was he being protected from, at least in the afterlife? What were they trying to protect him from? Yes. In the afterlife, uh, they are always pro protecting the mummy because he must have the body. If he doesn't have the body, so he can't uh, live another life, after life. So we must have the body. We, we protect it. And in, uh, in Tutankhamun tomb, as you see, we have four shrine, and then three coffins, and then another coffin, and then sarcophagus to protect the mummy, only for the mummy. So we want to protect as soon as we, we can. And uh, of course, from thieves also. We are protecting the tomb from thieves. 
because uh, they are, they can come and destroy the mummy and destroy all the funerary uh, mo the all all things with the cere ceremonial and everything yes Yes, there were many exhibitions. Uh, there are uh, from 1960 till now. We have a lot of exhibitions, and in the United States we have uh, many exhibitions also. But from the Egyptian Revolution till now, we, do, we didn't have any exhibitions. So we we hope that we have another exhibition soon. <laughs> Now, now we have an evidence that he, he hadn't been murdered, but uh, only he had uh, deformities and he had uh, severe malaria. He, he hadn't been murdered, no. Yes? Are there still any items remaining in the burial chambers in the Valley of the Kings, or have all of them been removed? Yes, uh, all of them have been removed. Uh, he, he spent 10 years for emptying the tomb. Howard Carter spent 10 years for emptying the tomb. So all of them now are empty. <laughs> and one follow-up question, is the tomb itself open to the public? Yes, of course, yes. And it, uh, the mummy remained there also. The mummy of Tutankhamun, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, no, but we, we didn't find, we didn't find any collection of any other King, because all of them were robbed. If we find anything, any tomb, any treasures of any tomb, we can we can imagine, for example, King Ramses or uh, any of other king who was very famous, uh, such as uh, Tutankhamun, because he lived only ten years. So ten years, and we have all this collection. If we think about Ramses II, who lived uh, 95 years, <laughs> so it will be great, of course. But it was robbed, all of them. The, the, mo the, the only one who was intact, virtually intact, was the tomb of Tutankhamun. <laughs> because it was, you know, because uh, the entrance itself was, uh, the entrance itself uh, was hided by another tomb of King Ramses VI. Yes. Yes, we ha yes, uh, yes. DNA, we, with DNA, because uh, with analysis of the uh, mummy, we discovered that he, he is the, the son of uh, King Akhenaten, and his mother was uh, King Akhenaten's sister. Wasn't Nefertiti, uh, of course. Yeah, because he, he was the only one that we found all his collection, all things in his tomb. It wasn't, it wasn't been robbed before. That's why he's very famous. <laughs> yes? You must go and see. Yes, you must go and see by yourself. Yes, <laughs> it's I amazing. Have been, but others in my have been. Yeah. I, I very soon. Yes, of course. A value of the king yes, in Luxor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. 
in the 18th dynasty. The 18th, the 18th dynasty. Yes, he changed his name because uh, before him, uh, the king Akhenaten had uh, the, the 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 god Aten as the whole the, the main the main god. But when he came to Tutankhamun, he have to change the religion. He have to change the god from Aten to Amun. So he changed his name from Tutankhamun to Tutankhamun. <laughs> You, you are talking about objects from uh, from the Egyptian museum, the or mummies. If you are talking about mummies itself, mummies itself uh, was not robbed because uh, there have been uh, they have been hided. You know, the, the, the ancient Egyptians were very clever. They hided their mummies. But I'm talking about the treasures, their treasures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, most of uh, the treasures of tombs were robbed. I'm talking about the New Kingdom treasures. Yeah. <laughs>